Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we will learn about operators in the Python programming language. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. In the last lesson, we defined a statement as an operation on a value. Now we can define Python operators as symbols used to perform operations on values and the variables that hold those values. So let's look at some examples, and we'll do that by opening a terminal window first. So you can go to the terminal menu, and from terminal menu you can choose new terminal, or you can just press control and the back tick, which will also open a terminal window. From there, we need to start our Python REPL, and I do that in Windows by typing pi. And you might remember in Mac and Linux, I believe you type Python 3, just like that. I'm just going to type pi and press enter, and now my Python REPL has started. So the first operator that we have used already, and that I'll introduce today, is the assignment operator. So you have seen me type this example before. I'll just type name equals, and I'll set the variable name equal to the string Dave. After I do that, it's now assigned. That's the assignment operator, and I can type name, and I get the value back. Likewise, we can assign other values. So I'll take meaning as a variable name and assign the number 42. And if I type meaning, I get the value 42 back. So I think it's easy to see how assignment works and how the assignment operator, which is just the equal sign, works in Python. From there, we'll move on to arithmetic operators. Now you have your standard addition, say two, and then plus two, press enter, we get four. So we can use Python just like a calculator. We can have four minus two, and we get two back. We can also do multiplication, so two times two, we get four, and we can do division. So let's do something here that's a little different. Let's say 24 divided by five. Now, what would you expect to get back from this? Possibly four if it's rounded down, or five if it's rounded up, but maybe we'll get a decimal back. Let's see, and yes, we get 4.8. But there's also floor division, so we could say 24 and then use two slashes, and that's floor division, which means it's going to round the answer down. And now we get four. Or we could also use the round function, and then we could say 24 divided by five, and now it's five because it rounds up. But what if we just want the remainder? Well, then we use a different operator, and that's the percent sign. And then I have 24% 5, and let's see what we get back. We just get the remainder, which is 4. Also, there's exponents. So if we said 2 to the power of, which is 2 asterisks, 3, that would be 2 times 2 times 2. And yes, we get 8. So what if we said 2 to the power of 5? That's 32. And so you see how that works as well. And now when we're working with variables, we can combine the assignment operator and arithmetic operators. So let's take meaning and set it equal to 42. And now I can say meaning, and then I can say plus equals one. And now what do you think the value of meaning is? If I type in meaning and we get the value, it's now 43, so it added one to that. So that was a lot like saying 42 plus one, but the variable meaning holds the value of 42. Likewise, we could take meaning, if I type meaning correctly, and say minus equals one, and now meaning should be back to 42. We can do the same with the other operators also. So I can say meaning, and then times equals 10, and then if we check the value of meaning, we get 420. So now let's look at meaning, and let's say divides by and equals. Now, what do you think will happen if we go ahead and divide this by 10? What will be the result? Well, let's go ahead and look. After we do that, we need to check the value, and it's 42.0, so that might be unexpected. We have a decimal now when we divide, but we could have used the floor division and not received that response. Now, this won't change meaning, Notice we're not using an assignment operator here. We're just rounding meaning, and we'll see what the response is. Well, it's 42, but now if we check meaning, it still has the decimal point. So we could say meaning equals round 
meaning. And now that would remove the decimal point. So if we check it here, it's now just 42. One other thing you can use the plus operator for, and that is to concatenate two different strings. So if I took my first name in a string, Dave, and I'll put a space after it and put a, another double quote, then I can use the plus symbol and I could put my last name. Oops, I accidentally hit return or enter too soon. So let me try that again. Dave space, uh, double quotes, plus, now double quote, Gray, make sure I hit the double quote again and not the enter key. Now we get one string returned that has concatenated the two previous strings of my first name and my last name. And now I want to look at comparison operators. But before I do that, let's get rid of our previous history here. And we can do this in the terminal by going to the three dots and choosing clear terminal. And then it just clears out the full terminal for us as well. So now let's look at comparison operators. And so if we want to check to see if one number is equal to another, let's say the number 42, is it equal to 41? Let's find out when we press enter. And we get a false response. So let's see if 42 is equal to 42. Notice we're using the double equals, so it's not the assignment operator. Here we're checking to say, is this equal? And when I press enter, then we get true. Notice we're getting false and true on these responses. That is called Boolean data. And notice how the false and true are both capitalized at the very first letter of the word. So now if we check to say 42 is not equal to 42, well, that's false. So if we said something like 43 is not equal to 42, we would get true back. Likewise, we have greater than and less than operators. So 10 is greater than five, that is true. 10 is less than five, that is false. We also have greater than and equal to operators. So 10 is greater than or equal to 10, that is true. 10 is less than or equal to 10. Well, that's also true because it's still equal to 10. And so now working with these comparison operators, we've introduced Boolean data, the true and the false. So let me create some variables here. I'll just set a variable named x equal to true. Then I'll set a variable y equal to false. And I'll set a variable z equal to true. Now we can use some Boolean operators with these variables. So the first Boolean operator we'll look at is the word not. It is a keyword, and so x is true, but if we say not x and we press enter, we get the opposite, false. So if we said not y, we get true. Again, the opposite. Another Boolean operator is and, and this would look at two conditions. For example, x and y. Now let's look at what happens. It's going to evaluate the first value and it only looks at the second value if the first value is true. So what do you think we'll get as a response? We get false because the first one is true, so it looked at the second one. Likewise, if we said y and x, now the first value is false and it stops evaluating right there. So and needs both values to essentially be true. That's what we're checking for. So if either one is false, that's where it stops. Now just the opposite is the Boolean operator or. So let's say x or y. And now it's only going to look at the second if the first is false, but x is true. So the response we get is true. But if we say y or x, y is false. So the response we get is true again because it looks at the second value because the first was false. So you can kind of remember it that way, and and or are the opposites. They would kind of give opposite results. But or is just checking to see if one or the other is essentially true. And and, if we use that in a conditional statement, which you'll see an example of here in just a minute, and would actually be us looking for both values to be true is what we would be hoping for. If X is true and Y is true, then do something else. So for example, we could say X and Z, now they're both true and we get true back because the first was true. So it returned the value of Z actually, because then the second was true. And then we could also have Z and Y 
And what would happen here? It's going to be false again because Z was true, so it went ahead and looked at the second value. Now let's check again with the ors, Y or Z. What are we going to get here? We get true because Y was false. Now if we said Z or Y, we get true again, but it stopped when Z was true. It never evaluated Y. Now I understand that can be a little bit confusing, so it's good to play around with these and check those Boolean operator comparisons yourself until you get the hang of how they work. So for now, let's quit the REPL. We'll type quit with parentheses. And after that, let's close the terminal window. And we're going to create a new file here in Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to press Control and N, and that brings up a new file. Remember, you could also use the new file icon over here. And now I'm just going to start typing, and then we'll save the file afterwards. So I'm going to take the variable meaning and assign it the value of 42. Now I can do Control S to save the file, or I could go to the File menu and choose Save As, which would allow me to name the file as well. I'll just do Control S. Now I'm going to name this meaning.py for Pi or for Python. And I want to make sure that I have the Python file type here as the save as type as well. So when I choose save, now it is a Python file. Now in our small meaning program here, I also want it to start with an empty line. So I'm going to print an empty string to start out with. Now we were using comparison operators and you often see those in logical if statements. So let's create our first if statement. I'll say if, meaning is greater than 10. Now I have a colon. So now I indent. And notice when I pressed enter, Visual Studio Code already knew I needed to be indented. And the indentations do mean something in Python. And so now I'm going to print, I'll just say, right on. So if meaning is greater than 10, this would be the output. After this line, now I do not want an indentation, and Visual Studio Code doesn't really know if I want to do something else here or not after meaning would be uh, greater than 10. So here I need to backspace just to go back to where I do not want to be indented. Now I'll type the word else. So this is essentially if meaning is not greater than 10, we're going to do something else. And I'm going to print here and I'll say not today. So we have our first if else statement, and it's going to check the value of meaning. We're using a comparison operator here. So once we save that, now if you remember how to run the code, we can just click the play button here. In the past, I've used the drop down and chose run Python file, which also works, but we can do it a little simpler than that just by clicking this button. So let's do that and it runs the code. Oh, it did not find an alias. Maybe we need to choose Python, run Python file first. And after we do that one time, I think this play button is going to work. Yes, it works the next time. So if you need to do that, if you get that error that you saw I had, go ahead and choose run Python file the first time after that the play button works just fine. And we get right on every time. And that's because I don't need this bash window here either. We're just using the Python one. But this is because meaning is 42, which is greater than 10. So let's change the value of meaning to eight. And I'll save the file again. And now I'll click the play button, run, and it says not today. I'll drag this back up so we can see just a little bit more, run it again. And you can see the command that is issued when I click the play button. Now, if you remember, this is a quick review, how we can run this ourselves from the terminal window. We can just type pi to run our Python code and then type the name of the file dot pi. Because we're in this, I'm in this lesson 03 directory, and that's the name of this up here. Whatever folder you have would be the name there. And then we can see the file. So just pi and then meaning dot pi, and we'll get the same result. But you see the long version here when you click the play button here. And so we get not today because meaning is only equal to the number eight. I'm going to close the terminal window for just a little bit more room. And we need to look at one more operator today. And that's the ternary operator. If else statements are nice, but look, this took four lines. We could do all of this on one line if we wanted to. 
So let's talk about something else we can do. We learned about comments in the last lesson. I'm going to highlight all of this code in Visual Studio Code. I do that by clicking and dragging. Once I do that, I'm going to press Control and Slash, and it just commented out all those lines of code that I have highlighted. So they're still there, and I want to leave these in here to give you the example of the if else statement. But now let's use the ternary operator to accomplish the same thing in one line of code. And so I'll put another comment here and I'll spell this out. This is a ternary operator. In Python, we accomplish this a little bit different than if you're used to JavaScript or some other language. So the first thing I'm going to type is what I want to be the output if the statement is true. So I'm going to type print right on. And then after that, I'm going to actually put the conditional statement, what we're checking for. So I'll say if meaning is greater than 10. And then after that, I need the word else still. And then I can put what the output will be if it is false. And I'll print not today. That is our ternary statement, and it uses the ternary operator. It looks a little different, especially than I often work in JavaScript, for example. It looks a little different than the way I would do this in JavaScript. But let's go ahead and run the code again just by clicking the play button, and we get not today. It works just fine. Let's put the number back to 42, and let's run it again. And now we get right on. Our ternary statement is working as expected. So we've covered the most common Python operators today, but some other Python operators will also be introduced in the future, and those include the identity operator, the membership operator, and even bitwise operators. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.